is something about it when people who know how to use their faith come together to pray. The Holy Spirit empowers us. We can be strong in prayer. We can be effective in prayer. Welcome to the Saturday evening session of prayer everywhere. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Holden. I was about to walk out here. My mic fell off. I just, I was, so that would have been a little bit, that slowed things down a lot. Well, thank you, Holden. Go ahead. You did such a great job. Let me, you go, come right in. Just welcome everybody. Put you well, welcome, welcome, welcome. I want to give honor to where honor is due. Have y'all enjoyed Pastor Terry this Aww. week? She has been such a joy, and uh, man, we just always learned so much from you. We're so thankful for your obedience to prayer and your obedience Praise to Praise the Lord. Well, prayer. I appreciate that, but I had a lot of help this week. I think we had between 35 and 40 different mm -hmm. people over the course of the week praying, and I thought that that was a great thing, and I thank the Lord that He gave us that direction. That was new yeah. for us to do, and I thought it was good, but it's... Uh, it, yeah, it so thank you. Stuff, now, and I'm really glad to have both of you up here. These are my two. This is, this is uh, Moses and Elijah right here. I know how Jesus felt <laughs> standing up here in between these two. You know, I've got power on the left and power on the right. And, and so I'm blessed. I'm blessed. You may be seated. I want to welcome everyone who's, in case you don't know, I've, we have Miss Iva, Miss Iva Bennett, who's here in case you, anybody in here not know who Miss Iva is? I feel sorry for you. Okay. All right. Come on up here, guys. Um, I want to welcome everyone who's watching on the Victory Channel tonight from the top of the world, the bottom all the way around. We thank you for being a part with us this evening. And I hope that you have been a part of the Southwest Believers Convention 2023. We're here in this last service tonight. But, you know, really, Pastor George and I, for us, it's an eight-day meeting. We start Sunday morning, we kick it off, and then we'll be winding it up tomorrow in church. And so you're welcome to join us if you're out of town and, and here for, for a while. We'd be glad to have you here and you to join us for service in the morning at 10 o'clock. And of course, we're on the Victory Channel live every Sunday morning. I think we're going to do something a little different this evening than what we've done in the past. You know, I normally come in I, having spent the time to put it before the Lord and have a direction as I walk in. And I've got one, something that's, that's kind of sitting right in front of me and I think we'll touch on it tonight for sure. But I want us to take this time and wait on the Lord. What does that mean? Waiting on Him. It's not wait like, would He just hurry up kind of waiting. It's more like a servant who waits a table. I love the scripture. It just comes to my mind and I don't know where it is offhand in Proverbs, but, and I just read it a couple of days ago or so, but it talks as the eye of a maid is on her, the hand of her mistress. What does that mean? It means that the, I saw this actually in action one time. Keith and Phyllis Moore at the time were serving the Hagans a lot, even though I think they were already out in their own ministry. And yet they would travel with the Hagans everywhere they went. This was after a service. We were in the, the speaker's room and, and, and I don't even remember where we were. And it was a large speaker's room and quite a few people back there. And Miss Hagan was sitting talking with someone and Phyllis was sitting with me. We were talking and together and, and but she kept, she kept doing that way. And I was watching her. She was watching Miss Hagan. And we talked and she held the conversation with me just great. But every few seconds she was checking for Miss Hagen. And then she, all of a sudden she said, she wants her purse. And she jumped up and got her purse to her and then came back and sat down. And we continued to talk a little bit. And all of a sudden uh, she looked and said, oh, she's ready to go. And off she went. She was watching. She knew, she knew. And I was looking at Miss Hagen too and I didn't see anything. But she knew her. She knew every glance, every look. She knew the look on her face. She knew the, the just it, even looking for something. She knew what she was looking for. She knew when she had that, I'm ready to go. Where's Phyllis look on her face? 
and was jumped to run. That, that is how sensitive we are to be to the Holy Spirit and looking to Him and watching for His leading, praying in the Spirit. And that's one of the wonderful things about tongues. Tongues is not just multidimensional, it's any and every dimensional. Praying in the Spirit, the Spirit is as deep and wide as God Himself. And so tongues can be used, can be uh, activated with the intent of watching Him, an assistance of the Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit in John 16 says he will tell us what he hears from the Father. Habakkuk 2, I will station myself on my post of observation and I will watch to see what he will say within me and what answer I should make as his mouthpiece. That's the Amplified Classic. If you thought, stop to think about that. I will watch to see what he will say. In spiritual things, you're watching and you see what is said. How can you see what's said? Don't you hear what's said? You see it. How do you see it? Not just with eyes like you do words, but revelation. A light comes, a knowing comes. There's a knowing that he, you know him as that maid. This is the little maid watches the hand of her mistress to watch for him. And to make no assumptions and to watch even in praying in the spirit it's really easy to pray in the Spirit the same way every time. But to on purpose watch for words from here. Look for them, even in the way they're delivered. Gently, softly, intently, firmly, boldly. Are you asking? Are you demanding? Are, are, are you inquiring? Are you questioning? Are you telling? First Corinthians 12 says to be sure in tongues you give thanks well. It's a good way to tell him how thankful you are as a believer and the love of and for God is in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. And sometimes we can find ourselves unappreciative and caught up in the way this world goes, which is selfish, self-centered, self-conscious. But to look for gratitude and to look for appreciation that's in there by the Holy Spirit and let those words take you to that place where you can appreciate him and love him by faith and be grateful. As dad said earlier today, he, he referenced a lot of hard things. There's a lot of ugly, evil, unimaginable things that people would do what they're doing in the Satan is revealing his character and his nature. But to look within ourselves and to see him, to see Jesus. The song, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of this earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and his grace. Thank you, Lord. 
so we turn our eyes upon Jesus. We turn our spiritual eyes upon him. We look within. We search for him. You know, praying that way is probably the greatest and most lovely way to develop patience. Our way tends to be to just grab at prayer with whatever seems to be first and whatever comes to our minds. But allowing Him to direct your prayer and allowing Him I found that in talking to him from that place of hearing, of, of following him, it's when you see him. To know him is how you know what to do. Knowing him is how you know what to say. Not just in prayer, but in life. I put things before the Lord a lot. My husband is CEO and I work right next to him. My title is Chief Visionary Officer, but I carry a lot of the same type of duties he does. We have a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week network that's growing and developing and programming and expanding and staff. I have on my desk around 15 different building projects of one nature or another. We pastor a growing and thriving church we have a Bible school, and we got family. How many have family? Sometimes my husband will say, everybody's got family. <laughs> so I put a lot of questions to him. I put a lot of things before the Lord, a lot. But I find that just, I find it in looking for him more than looking for answers brings more answers. The answers come in just knowing. Watching the gifts of the Spirit in operation discerning of spirits, word of wisdom, word of knowledge. Here's what to do. Here's the decision. Here's what to be prepared for. Here's how to do this first. And I like this phrase. And it's very encouraging. Sometimes answers don't come fast as you think or that you feel that you need. And it takes more. It takes looking. Jesus said, ask, but he also said, seek and knock. But the journey oftentimes is more profitable than the destination. Sometimes coming to the answer actually does more in the process than just getting the answer that you're looking for. Because there's more of him. 
You learn more, you know more, you grow more. And those kind of things are worked into your spiritual fabric. And you find that the next time something comes up, the answer is at the ready. Thank you, Lord. So let's stand. If you two want to step up, thank you. I want to start just by praying in the spirit, see where he takes us on this last evening that we have together. Thank you, Father. Indeed, how precious you are. Indeed, how grateful we are. Indeed, how humbled we are. We're grateful, Lord, first to be called children of the Most High to be born again into your kingdom. But Lord, we're grateful for all that you've told us and that we've heard. We're thankful to know something about what that means. We're thankful to know what we've to learn what we've learned this week. We're changed. We're different. Some ways we understand and some ways we don't even know yet. Things, things at home are different even if we don't know it yet. Things are different in this nation. And Jesus, you're closer than you've ever been. We thank you for every life that's touched. We thank you for every soul that's come into the kingdom this week. We thank you for the souls that will come from all of those who will tell what's happened to them. We thank you for every pastor I thank you for every congregation that will be different because the pastor heard a word. We thank you for families, Lord, that will stay together. We thank you for children that will never, never go wayward because of the encounter they had with you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the teenagers. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the young adults. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. You said that Jesus came to undo the works of the devil. And I'm so thankful for every work of that evil creature that's been undone this week. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for every one of his strategies and plans that's been revealed. Thank you for light that's come. Thank you for every, every plan that he had. Everything that was in the, in the works that will never come to pass because of the word that we've heard and the spirit of the Lord that we have been with. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for angels that are busier than they were before. Lord, thank you. Thank you for fulfilling my dad's dream last night. Thank you for that. Thank you for touching his heart. Thank you for loving him. Thank you. Thank you for all the funds and the income. Thank you, Lord.
thank you. Thank you for the grand opportunities we have had and will have in sowing and giving and blessing. Thank you for all the people that have been touched that were connected to this meeting, the event staff, the hotel, the housekeepers and the waitresses and the waiters and the cooks. Thank you, Lord, for touching downtown Fort Worth. Lord, this is my city. This is my home. I love my city. I love my home. Thank you, Lord, that for 42 years, we've been right here, right here. Thank you, Lord. I thank you for the times that you brought us through that were just so hard, things that happened, and yet we stood. We saw the kingdom of God blessed. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you for victory over death. I've seen it time and again and again and again. I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for every person who has come and worked. Worked whether they were serving as volunteers. Thank you for them. Thank you for their families and their lives. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for every minute they gave. Thank you for the price that it cost them to be here to do that. Bless them, Lord. Bless them. Multiply revelation to them. Thank you for those, Lord, who served on the streets of this city. Lord, witnessing and sharing and praying from, from street corners to department stores and grocery stores and wherever they went. He who wins souls is wise. So, Lord, I pray that the wisdom that Jesus Christ has made to them wisdom. That Jesus himself will bring them answers and insight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I want to thank you. Well, I want to thank you for the privilege of prayer. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. What would we do if we didn't have that? <laughs> Thank you, Lord. How blessed we are. Well, blessed we are that I can open my mouth and utter words and you hear them. And if you hear them, then you respond to them. Thank you for the privilege of exercising the authority that Jesus' death and resurrection gained for us. Thank you that I can stand again behind this holy desk and before your people, Lord, oh my God, how grateful I am. I see, Lord, that in this moment, I see your people 
you said. There's something about it. When people who know how to use their faith come together to pray. And that these who have come are treasures in your eyes. I thank you though for those who pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for those who have prayed a prayer or a thousand prayers. Thousands of prayers. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. I pray for these. I pray for these who have joined us on victory. Thank you. Lord, I pray for their families. I pray for their children. I pray for the things that are nearest to their hearts. Lift those things, Lord, that weigh them, weigh on them. I pray that, Lord, in the very, the very next time, They'll turn their eyes to you. That you open the treasures of your glory to them. Sweet and precious Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Look for in his wonderful face. Could you turn Jonathan up in the monitors, please? And the things of earth will grow strange. In the light of His glory and grace, oh, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in His wonderful face. say one last thing as we close out tonight how much I love you and I know it's not the end of the service but I have to tell you that I love you and that Jesus is Lord Thank you.